It's Halloween. I'm wearing a cape. We are going to do 10 AI jump scares and one real scare in AI that you should pay attention to. So I'll do the 10 jump scares first. A jump scare in a movie is when the monster jumps out and it's a lot more scary feeling it that it actually is dangerous. And I think there's a lot of rumors around AI that fit that criteria. They feel more scary than they really are. So number one, jump scare, AI will take all your jobs. I don't think that's true. The reason I don't think it's true is that fundamentally, there is too much information in the world to process and pipe for an AI decision maker to make good choices about all of it, even if we invented a decision maker that would make good choices about all of the choices we face as workers, which we haven't done yet, by the way. So no, I don't think AI will take our jobs. Number two, jump scare, AI will become Skynet. I don't see evidence of that. I see a lot of evidence of people working to align AI so that it is safer. Is there risk? Absolutely. Is it something where I think our science fiction brains have gotten ahead of our real brains? I do. I do not see evidence that we are progressing linearly toward a future where the AI is going to control everything and run us as resources. In fact, I see us working really hard to ensure that we are creating an aligned future where even if we create very smart artificial intelligence, maybe even super intelligence, it's aligned with what humanity as a whole is looking for. Jump scare number three, AI agents will run the internet. Now I know we're getting to AI agents in reality. I've been talking about it. We're seeing more and more evidence of that. They are out there. We talked about how there's uh, an AI that's a millionaire on this channel. Uh, we've had Claude launch AI agents that control your desktop. Just because there are LLMs that make decisions and that are online, it does not follow that AI agents will immediately become the dominant force on the internet. And the reason for that is pretty simple. LLMs are getting better and AI agent decision-making is improving, but it's improving from a pretty bad place. If you have actually watched the Claude demo videos that are out there, they're okay. It's kind of like driving a cart into the ditch every 10 feet. Like it does work, but it takes a bit. Will it get better? Yes. But even if it gets better, the token cost is still really high. Like right now, it is a non-trivial amount of tokens to use Claude in agent form for 15 minutes. It's like a million tokens. This is not something that is immediately going to take over the internet. And even when agents become more popular and become cheaper and become smarter, they are going to do better at specific jobs. General purpose agents are really hard to build and will take longer. Specialized agents are going to do a whole lot more next year than general purpose agents. So no, I do not think AI agents are going to run the internet. These are all from my TikTok, by the way. Like, I am literally pulling comments out of the TikTok for these jump scares. Number four, software is dead. No, software is not dead. In fact, there has never been a better time to build software. Now, distribution channels have also never mattered more. If you launch a piece of software and you don't have an expectation for how people will sign up for it, that's always been a problem. It is more of a problem now because there is more noise, because building software is cheaper, easier, and the expectations are higher. So it has never been a better time to build, but you have to know where the distribution channels are. Number five for jump scares, all the money will go to OpenAI or other big model builders. Look, OpenAI will monetize, Anthropic will monetize. I do think we are going to get much more expensive and much smarter models next year. I would not be surprised to see a four-figure price point for a model next year. Certainly for corporate accounts, there may be three-figure models for individuals if you want high-end performance. That does not mean that all the money will go to OpenAI. In fact, I would argue that the incredible competition we are seeing between Google and Meta and I mean, Netflix is in the game directly, and Grok with X, and OpenAI, and Anthropic. It leads to cheaper intelligence. Any given model you may have to pay something for, but net-net, the pressure in the market is for more intelligence cheaper. It is a tough time to be a model builder. You can launch a model that you have put hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars into training, and it can be out of date within three weeks. 
it is really tough to be a model builder. It is really great to be a consumer of models. And so, no, I, I don't think that OpenAI is going to get all the money. Jump scare number six, AI code is always terrible and will break things. That's just not true. I know that people were coming after me in my mentions when I said that Google has 25% of their code written by AI. Amazon is doing that with Q. Look, it doesn't matter if it's utility code. The point is it is useful code that is providing value. So it is making it to production. Does that mean that AI is solving the most complex use cases? No, that's fine. It would be nice if humans could do the fun and interesting design stuff. So no, I don't think that AI code is always bad. It's useful. I think we see plenty of evidence that it is. I think another place that AI code is useful, even if bloated, is in these LLM generated code tools. Bolt is unlocking so much for people who have not coded. I taught a Maven course. And at the end of the day, people are flocking to Bolt as new builders because it is so easy to get from idea to working preview. Easier than Replit right now, easier than Cursor right now. Got to take my hat off to Bolt. I'll take my hood off for a second. There you go. Um, yeah, Bolt is really easy. And it's reminding me that even if Bolt's code isn't as clean as it could be, it is solving problems and shipping useful value. And that's what matters at the end of the day. Jump scare number seven, the AI will take all my data. That one's been around a while, and it reminds me of the old scares on Facebook, where it would be like, paste this on your wall, or else Mark Zuckerberg will own all your data. And this little like social virus would spread around every year or so. And you would see a bunch of people just like paste a bunch of legalese boilerplate to their wall, because they genuine, be genuinely believed that would save them from somehow having their data stolen. Look, the reality is, that AI training data is different from utterances you give the AI. If you are giving the AI utterances, that is not being used directly for training because the model is not training when it comes back to you. The model is just inferring and responding. That's it. So no, it's not taking your data. And they have even more explicit protections at enterprise level. And by the way, if you think enterprise and you think thousands of dollars, I will tell you OpenAI's enterprise package is like 60 bucks a month. If you want as an individual to get enterprise protections for your data that you give to OpenAI, great, 60 bucks a month. And by the way, the baseline protections are fine too. So I, this is just a myth, it's a jump scare, and it's not something that I think is relevant. And I think it comes from the fact that people confuse training and inference, and they need to stop. Training is training. What you train your data on is a one-time thing. And inference is what happens when you type something into the chat. Those are different things. Okay, jump scare number eight. When AGI comes, we're all doomed. Uh, AGI is artificial general intelligence. And there's this widespread perception. It kind of goes back to the Skynet thing, but it's specific to a level of intelligence. Like when we get intelligence that is human level, the perception I get that I read in the YouTube comments, that I read in the TikTok comments is that we're all doomed. And that's not true. And I've mentioned it at the top where I think that part of it is information processing and it's just physics. Like there's too much information in the world. But I think the other reason is more fundamental. Artificial general intelligence, if it arrives, will arrive inside human institutions. Human institutions are designed to work for humans. We can argue about how fair they are, but fundamentally that's what they're there for. That means that AGI is contextualized, is situated inside human context from the start. We will expect it to align to human incentives, human processes. And so when I see claims like AGI will make pharmaceutical approvals run 10 years faster, I kind of laugh because the problem is not intelligence. The problem is that our drug approvals process is mired in bureaucracy and no amount of intelligence will change that. That's just not how it works. And so I think that we overestimate the degree to which AGI is actually going to change everything. I think it will be very helpful for certain applications. I think it is looking like it will be more helpful for specific business decisions. We may see an artificial intelligence agent with AGI capabilities as a standard part of C-suite meetings 
in the next year. I do not think that means that we will not have any employees, as I've shared before. I also don't think it means that the AGI will start to try and take over companies and run them ridiculously because it's going to exist inside a context. Human contexts matter. Okay. Number nine. AI isn't really adding productivity. I hear that too. That's actually different from the other ones that, that I've listed here because a lot of the other ones assume AI will get better. This one assumes AI is terrible. That's also not true. People are adopting artificial intelligence faster than they adopted the internet. And the reason they are doing so is because it is phenomenally helpful for general productivity. And if you are not finding it helpful, it is probably at this point, you. Now you can fix that, you can learn. There are lots of tutorials. I have lots of stuff all over the internet on how to get better at this. Happy to talk with you. But at the end of the day, better prompting alone, like leaving aside tool chain solutions, leaving aside other tools, let's just assume you're in a chatbot, which by the way, is not necessarily the recommended setup. But let's just say that's where you are because that's the simplest place people start. Even if that's the only use you have for AI, just typing into a chatbot, better prompting will get you 10x better results, hands down. And so think about it. If you're not getting good results from ChatGPT, are you using current class models? Are you prompting well? Do you know how to prompt well? Are you experimenting with prompting like code? It's worth thinking about because AI is enhancing productivity and that is why we are seeing absolutely massive adoption. That's why the Wharton study on AI adoption at work had people doubling their usage since last year up from a very high base, like a third of people were using it last year, two thirds today, three quarters today. Okay, jump scare number 10. AI hallucinates too much to be useful. That wasn't true a year and a half or two years ago when AI came on the scene with ChatGPT, generative AI came on the scene with ChatGPT. It is definitely not true now. The larger language models, the cutting edge language model, the new Claude 3.5, uh, the 4.0 or 0.1 class from OpenAI, they don't really have a hallucination problem that's worth talking about unless you are operating at enterprise scale, in which case even small errors add up and you have to sort of work on an agentic approach to fix it. But fundamentally, if you're doing day-to-day -day tasks as an office worker, hallucinations have almost entirely gone away. Not completely, I still check your work, but for the most part, it's just not an issue anymore. And it's because the large language models actually got better. The bigger you get, and I actually saw a study on this, the bigger the language model and the more it is able to articulate an answer specifically with confidence, the more likely that answer is to be not a hallucination. So there you go. I think that one's a jump scare. Okay, now it's time for the real scare. What is the thing that you should actually be scared of with AI? If you are building in the AI infrastructure space, you should be scared. One of the things we have seen in 2024 is that the model builders are going to monetize by taking the AI infrastructure layer. App builders are great. They're going to be fine. Infrastructure builders are in trouble. So for example, if you've built your entire product on delivering RAG solutions on top of other models, that's a really dangerous place to be right now. If your entire model is just enabling a voice interface with a particular model through a bunch of backend chicanery, that's a very dangerous place to be. You want to be in a place where you are delivering real value to customers leveraging intelligence, not where you're trying to make the intelligence slightly more platform-like, because the intelligence companies, OpenAI, Anthropic, others, they are going to own the platforms. They are going to make their platforms more useful. You saw that with the Swarm API launch from OpenAI. You saw that with um, GitHub going multi-LLM this week. You can now use Claude on GitHub. They've given up just trying to make you not use Claude. They're making the platforms more useful. Don't be an AI infrastructure. That is the really scary place to be. Okay, there you go. 10 jump scares, one thing you should really be scared of about AI. I hope you enjoyed the cape.